Well, good evening, San Diego. I'd like to welcome you to the 40 years of Pointed Ears slideshow here at San Diego Comic Con. This is ElfQuest's 40th anniversary. Cannot quite believe it ourselves. Um, before we do anything else, I'd like to introduce everybody on the panel because there's a few people here who were not listed or going to be here or who are surprises. So, I'm Richard Finney. I'm the RP of Warp and the one who carries the spear mostly. To my left is Wendy Pini, who is the, the, the bright light behind that. To her left <laughs> is someone who just dropped in from another dimension. This is actually David Mizajewski, who works with us on social media for ElfQuest. He, you may know him as David Charles on Facebook. And he is currently incarnated as Thornbrake, the elf. And finally, to his left, is Brandon McKinney, a total surprise guest here on the panel. Brandon, as you may know, worked with us on ElfQuest for many, many years in the uh, 1990s, uh, most notably on the series called Shards, and he walked up to us five minutes ago and said, hi, I'm here. <laughs> and we said, you're on the panel. <laughs> um, now, this is the ElfQuest 40th anniversary show, and um, I need to ask, how many of you in this room have... Not yet, not yet. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's, that yes. was inspirational. That, <laughs> thank you for reminding us. Uh, we always start this show off with a howl, because that's the Wolf Rider's way. And would you like to lead this? All right, I like the fact that the room is dim, because Wolf Riders are creatures of the dark. So everybody, one, two, three. Excellent. Okay, in room 24, they're wondering what the heck went on. Um, how many of you have not read ElfQuest Final Quest? Okay, so it's about half of you. Um, I gotta tell you. <laughs> uh, this is a series that we wrapped up in February, and it's July. It's been out there, so if you haven't read it and you're interested in reading it, we gotta let you know there's spoilers. We don't think it will hurt your enjoyment of the experience of reading it. Um, we'd like to start out with a little thing that I call behind a scene. The thing about ElfQuest is it's artwork. And this, it started with Wendy, it ended with Wendy. There were a lot of wonderful people in between, but in Final Quest, uh, I thought you might be interested in a particular, how she builds a scene in the story. Now, this is a double page spread in the final issue, and it's kind of spectacular. Um, she didn't sit down and simply put this together all in one swell food. Uh, so how she works, and thank heaven for Photoshop, is start with a sketch, just a doodle, because you've got to figure out where things go on a page and how she's going to move your eye from upper left to lower right. Um, then a background goes in, just a background color to suggest deep space, and then some nice nebular, cloudy type colors uh, with some cutouts for what's going to come later. Uh, put in some dark to make the, um, the colors stand out. Uh, let's have a little bit of pixie dust, because there's going to be movement in this scene. Uh, need lots and lots of stars, because we're out in space. And there's a star. 
we're going to start building the system that this page will become. Now, that was a little subtle, but you just saw a tiny little bit of, of action up there in the, the center. The Palace of the High Ones is coming into the scene. It's coming in to discover the remains of the elves' homeworld. It's a burnt out, very, very Jack Kirby-esque husk of a world. Uh, the planet arrives at it. This is a still but animated kind of thing that Wendy does very nicely. Uh, we get closer to that burnt out husk of a planet. These are all Photoshop layers. Uh, Wendy loves Photoshop now because when she used to draw with pen and ink and she'd make a mistake, ow, you'd have to throw it out and start again. Photoshop has Command Z, undo. <laughs> Thank heaven for Command Z. Uh, the palace gets closer to that burnt out husk and a piece of it separates. Need moons. There are moons around this world. There are three moons, so you know it's not the world of two moons and it's not Earth. Um, little magic effect, because something magical is going to happen. Uh, more moons, and then the magic happens to that same uh, burnt out world, because the elves throw the palace into it. The palace contains all of the magical energy of the original world. And what we want to do, what Wendy wanted to do, was to recreate this world, so she builds up some magical aura effects, and suddenly the world is regenerated from within. It, it gets land masses, it gets water, it gets uh, an atmosphere, because it's coming back to life. And now you see it looking very much like a viable world. Clouds, weather, sunrise over the new world, and suggestions of, uh, again, new life, plants and, and, and um, regeneration, nice atmosphere for it. And the only thing left to put in here, of course, if you've seen the, the, the scene, is the observer who's watching this happen in not real time, it's kind of out of time. This is Cutter's vision of the new world that the elves are going to. So this is how a page like this gets put together on Wendy's iMac. And um, again, this is how it starts. And this is how it's finished. And the only thing that uh, remains is, of course, the lettering. But you know that's not part of the artwork. Um, over the course of 40 years, we have discovered a lot of moments in ElfQuest that just, for us anyway, really hit home to the gut. And uh, so we call them the feels. <laughs> we didn't call them that in 1978 because this particular term didn't exist in 1978. But it's here now and we're going to use it. Um, I'm sure that all of you have your own moments, moments in ElfQuest that just hit your heart and make you stop and take a breath. For us, these are some of those moments when, for example, your whole world goes completely upside down. Everything you thought you knew just got ripped apart. Um, there are those moments when you realize you didn't need to ask a certain question because the answer is on the other person's face. There are those moments in life when you realize it's too late. There are those moments when you realize your kid is a lot smarter than you gave him credit for. Um, and then there are those moments in life when your kid learns a certain truth about life. That things are not necessarily always going to be with you all the time. There are those moments when you learn a truth about life and death. There are those moments when you learn a truth about your world 
when you learn that it is maybe bigger and wider and more wonderful and stranger than you ever knew before. There are those moments when a chasm between two brothers gets bridged. You know the feeling when that happens. And then there are those moments when a chasm that you thought never could be bridged actually gets bridged. There are those moments when you realize that even when a life is ending, it's okay. It's okay, it's part of nature. And then there are those moments when you realize that even if it's the entire world that's ending, that's okay too. There are moments when you think that you cannot possibly survive the pain that you're going through. And then there are those moments when you realize you survived it and you came out the other side, okay. And then we hope for everyone in this room, there are those moments when you realize life is good. Now, we've been doing this a long time, 40 years. It only feels like 80, but we've been doing it for 40. <laughs> and we could not have done it without a lot of help. Wendy and I started this, just the two of us. It grew, it got to the point where we knew we couldn't continue it without help. So this part of the show is us saying thank you to our helpers. And there are some particular ones that we want to call out. Um, the first person that we ever worked with was Joe Staten, who inked Wendy's pencils on Siege of Blue Mountain. It gave Wendy's work a very distinctive look. Uh, we worked with a lovely woman named Lorraine McLeese, who brought a very manga-esque uh, sensibility to ElfQuest. She has also brought some animation sensibility. Um, Joellen Oglandis was a writer, still is, um, but she worked with us and created the character of Tyr, as well as a bunch of other characters. And Tyr has gone on to become one of uh, ElfQuest's most well-known and beloved characters. Um, Paul Abrams worked with us on Hidden Years in the uh, early uh, years of that series. Uh, gave it a very distinctive kind of otherworldly look. Barry Blair did a lot of work for us on a lot of tiles. He was our go-to guy. He could turn out a book in record time, and there were often situations in which we were running up against a deadline, and he pulled our fat out of the fire. And then uh, there's this guy who walked up to us five minutes before the panel, Brandon, sitting over there on the end, worked for many years on shards, and um, gave a ruggedness and a reality and a solidity to that story that we're very proud of to this day. Let's give him a hand. He's right there. We worked with another fellow named Steve Blevins. Uh, you know, a lot of people came to us from animation, and ElfQuest is a very animated kind of drawing style, so Steve brought that. And then a, a favorite that we did just a little bit with was John Byrne. Um, he did the inks on Hidden Years Nine and a Half, which was our Cutter and Rayek beat the snot out of each other for 40 pages issue. Um, Wendy got in touch with John because she knew that he could make her work look uglier than she could make her work look. And because this is such a brutal issue, Cutter and Rayek literally almost killing each other, it needed to look a little bit ugly and rough-edged. And so we got John to ink it, and the result was absolutely perfect. Um, most recently, We've worked with Sonny Strait, who, if you know Dragon Ball Z, is the voice of Krillin. 
but he's also an ace colorist, but he's also a very good artist. And he did a couple of long form stories for us, as well as all of the colors on Final Quest. So again, this is, you know, us saying thank you. This is just a few of the people. Um, when I went to make a list, it was a pretty good list. And um, I, I didn't realize over the period of all of these years how many people that we had actually worked with. And so thanks to every single name on this list. And if there's anyone that I have forgotten and you're in this room, raise your hand. If you're not in this room, well, you know, I'm not going to lose sleep. Uh, but this is, we want to say after 40 years, thank you to all of those people who helped ElfQuest be what it is. The fans said thank you to us at the end of Final Quest. This was totally unexpected. This was a complete surprise. Um, David Mizajewski Thornbreak, who's sitting two people to my left, who is fortunate to have Wendy as a barrier between <laughs> me and him, worked for how long? Six months? Online? At least, I think it was more like nine months. And nine months. That's an auspicious amount of time. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> um, he, I, you, you don't keep, keep secrets from me as the sort of nasty bad editor thing of ElfQuest. He kept a secret from us for nine months. He contacted dozens and dozens of fans and said, we're putting together a tribute book for the end of ElfQuest. And people could send in writing or drawing or photos or anything like that. And you presented that to us when the final issue came out. And it was a complete surprise. Yes. You surprised us. <laughs> I hope you're happy. I, I'm putting it on my resume because it, <laughs> it was a feat. Um, it, it, the project actually got started by a fan in the Netherlands, Wouter uh, Tewit, um, had this idea of just putting together a, a kind of a fan tribute, as Richard said, just to celebrate 40 years of pointed ears and everything that Wendy and Richard have given us. And so a, a, a secret, internet cabal was formed of a whole bunch of fans and we tried to reach out to as many people again secretly because you can't do anything publicly on the internet otherwise someone will sniff it out and so we um you know reached i think and, there you, were... and you got that number of people oh yeah and, there you go and and they all sent in like stories or paintings or something and and we wanted to show some of it but then we realized if if we showed one we'd probably have to show them all, because we didn't want to, you know, say that this one's better than that one. But because we have this guy sitting here, he was one of the conspirators. So this is an example of the sort of thing that was in that book. This is a piece of artwork that David did, uh, showing Red Lance in one of the, we call them the spooky ones or the ruthless ones, and it's this kind of a circle of life and death and renewal and regeneration, and that's the theme of that fan book, and we were just so, incredibly touched by that gesture. We still are. We still kind of choke up when we take it out and look at it. There's only one in the world. <laughs> and it, it's, it's a gift beyond our ability to say thank you, but thank you. You're very welcome. Um, this is a thanks-driven show and a thanks-driven celebration. Um, What's ElfQuest all about? People have been speculating, been telling us, been asking that question for 40 years. And um, we realized that you, the readers and the fans, have thanked us. You have given us a gift over all that time by letting us know what ElfQuest has meant to you or what ElfQuest has taught you. And I wanted to share some of those uh, um, revelations from you to us here with you. You've let us know how ElfQuest made you know a feeling of acceptance. 
in your life. Because ElfQuest is all about acceptance and inclusivity. And you've let us know that it has helped you understand that for yourself. Um, you've let us know that ElfQuest has helped you celebrate new life or the passing of a life in your own lives. You've let us know that ElfQuest has informed you about fear and how to overcome fear. You've let us know that everything is beautiful. <laughs> and um, there, there are no labels in life. You love who you love, and you love how you love. And it's all the same, it's all love, it's all great, it's all wonderful. And you've shared with us your stories of how ElfQuest helped you express that in your own lives. For some of you, ElfQuest has given you the strength or the courage to be who you are in the face of whatever adversity you may face in your day-to-day -day life. Um, you have let us know that ElfQuest has taught you the power of an honest apology. Maybe you've been in, uh, you know, at loggerheads with somebody and you realized you were wrong and ElfQuest said, it's okay to apologize, you don't have to be right, just apologize. And most of all, I think what we have heard you tell us is that ElfQuest has taught you that whatever you see, whatever you know, whatever you're familiar with, there's more. It's out there. Um, there is more beyond what we know. Seek it. However you choose to do that, you seek it. And you've let us know that of your journeys. Uh, speaking of journey, Final Quest, actually not Final Quest, but um, all of Elf Quest, adheres to a time-honored mythological storytelling structure called the Hero's Journey. If you're at all familiar with any of the work of Joseph Campbell, the great mythologist, you have heard the phrase, the Hero's Journey. And in all great mythic stories, the hero goes on a journey which is broken down into 12 steps. And I just want to do this real quick. Just This is the educational portion. There'll be a quiz. <laughs> um, the first step of the hero's journey is the hero is born into the ordinary world. He lives a life. Just, you know, day-to-day -day existence. Um, everything is normal. Everything is, is fine and dandy and maybe even a little bit boring. The second step is the call to adventure. Something prompts the hero to move out of his ordinary life. In the case of Cutter, it was the humans burning down the forest. And if that's not a prod that things are going to change, I don't know what is. Um, the third step is the refusal of the call. Cutter gets to Sorrow's End, the Wolf Riders settle down, Cutter and Lita find love together, and he's happy. He's got no reason to go anywhere. This is him refusing the call. But then, in step four, he meets a mentor, and in this case, the mentor is Sava. And the mentor gives advice, or gives a clue, or gives a prod, which sends the hero out. And in this case, Sava says, oh yeah, you know, I come from another tribe of elves, and Cutter being very curious goes, other elves? And then suddenly, he's curious. He goes out into the world, and the next step is the crossing of the threshold. And that happens when he meets the trolls out there in the ruins of, of what used to be the forest, and they capture him, and let him know that there's all of this stuff that he never knew before about the trolls, about the Palace of the High Ones, about Two Edge, about all of this stuff. And this is where the hero leaves the ordinary world and begins his adventure.
And in the course of that venture, the next step is the tests and he f the finding of, of allies and the discovering of enemies and of course who's, who's better to be a test or to uh, prove himself an, an enemy or at least a challenge is uh, going to be uh, Winnowill because the hero has to uh, engage in, in uh, tests of strength of will and all of that. Then a crisis approaches. We call it the approach to the inmost cave. It's, it's called a setback. Uh, the hero has to face a completely new, completely oddball, completely unexpected idea that he could never have imagined. And in Final Quest, it is the realization that Cutter himself and Tamain share a relationship unlike anything that has ever been in ElfQuest and unlike anything that anyone else in ElfQuest experiences. And it blows Cutter's mind, squirts it right out his ears. <laughs> <laughs> and that forces the supreme ordeal. If you have read it, you know that Cutter goes berserk. He runs away from what he has learned, he goes into the forest, he goes primal, he goes to ground, and he's got to deal with this. He's got to come to terms with it. But he does. He comes to turn, and there is what's called step nine, the reward. And he realizes so much more than he did before. One of the, one of the things about the reward is that he suddenly gains the knowledge that for thousands and thousands of years, the elves have been treating the trolls as slaves, treating them badly. And Cutter is the first one to have the knowledge and the compassion to make an apology for the last remaining first comer troll. This is where ElfQuest takes you all the way back 40 years to the very first scene in the original ElfQuest and closes that particular circle. Uh, after the reward, uh, you get the road back. And you think maybe all right, I can go back to the ordinary life. I've done what I was supposed to do. I made the apology. I've, I've asked forgiveness. I've gotten forgiveness. And now I can go back to the woods with my friends and my life mate and, and my tribe and, and live a good life. But this is not the end of the hero's journey um, because there is a final test, absolute final test. It's called resurrection. In ElfQuest, it is the, um, everything is at stake here. It's his, Cutter's final test. Everything about their life on the world of two moons, everything about their relationship with the humans on the world of two moons comes down to this moment. Cutter has to make a very final, very mortal decision. And he makes it. The, Last step in the hero's journey is called the return with the elixir. Cutter's life is forever changed by the decision that he makes. But the elixir that he gives, that he leaves with the wolf riders, is much greater knowledge about what they are to do going forward as the wolf riders and as the elves on the world of two moons. Um, ElfQuest is, and Wendy knew this from the very beginning when she told me in 1977, I have this story, she knew all of this stuff then. And it's only because she knew all of this stuff then that we've been able to plot this thing for 40 years and have it come full circle back to where all the clues that we planted and all those issues leading up here suddenly make sense. So, if you know the ending, it's bittersweet. If you don't know the ending, I don't think that this is going to spoil it for you. But if you do know the ending, then we like to close this section of the show with another howl. This time it's for Cutter, because he is the greatest wolf rider of them all. So, you want to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Howl through tears, right? <laughs> All right, guys, for Cutter. One, two, three. Oh!
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, <laughs> people freaked out when we announced Final Quest. They said, Final? That sounds so final. <laughs> Is it really the end of ElfQuest? Well, as they say in the movies, ElfQuest will return. Because, as we point out, Final Quest is the culmination of a 40-year arc. It is the culmination of Cutter's hero's journey. It is not the end of ElfQuest. We've got a lot more characters and we've got a lot more stories to tell. Some of them are going to spin directly out of the end of Final Quest. We are in deep talks with Dark Horse Comics. We have plans. We have <laughs> and, um, no, ElfQuest is not over. So, take some heart in that, if you will, please. Um, so, at this point, we're almost done, and I want to say shade and sweet water to you all, because thank you for being here. Um, but uh, there's, there's one last thing. We get feedback. <laughs> we get feedback. We get feedback in email. We get. We don't get too many paper letters anymore. We get a lot of stuff, a uh, commentary on on um, social media. But about a month after the final issue of Final Quest came out, I received an email, and here was the subject line. <laughs> and I want to read you this email. It's not very long. It's not very long at all. Subject, I hate you, Wendy Pini. I have never, in nearly 40 years of reading comic books, I have never taken it upon myself to write to a comic book artist. Oh yeah, there was that time I reached out to my friend Chip to place me in contact with Matt Wagner because of a potential research product I was working on during my doctoral studies, but that doesn't count. <laughs> Not like this counts. <laughs> you made me cry, Wendy Pini. <laughs> you made me cry while reading a <clears throat> comic book. <laughs> a comic book. Wendy Pini. A comic book. I have never cried while reading a comic book. I have never cried while reading any literature. I didn't cry when Hamlet died. I didn't cry when Gatsby died. I didn't cry when Little Nell died. I didn't even cry when the little matchstick girl died. And let me tell you, that's some tear-jerking <laughs> But you, with your, your writing and drawing and your sweet, beautiful whatever, <laughs> I just can't even do this right now. You are hands down the greatest comic book artist of all time. Yes. And I will never forgive you for what you just did to me. <laughs> Unrelenting son and brine to you, <laughs> Wendy Pini. <coughs> P.S. Thank you for 40 wonderful years. Aww. And thank you all for helping us celebrate 40 wonderful years. Now, I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, I think we might have five or maybe ten minutes. Oh, Brandon would like to say something. Could I? Okay. Go for it, man. You're up here. The, the, the whole reason I'm here is to... I, okay, I started 
reading ElfQuest when I was hitting puberty, right? And, and I was discovering comics and fantasy and hormones were happening. <laughs> Perfect timing to, to get into ElfQuest, that scene with Lita. <laughs> So you take hormones and you take the orgy scene. <laughs> it was awesome. So I started as a fan. I, I you know, so I, I started as a fan. Then I got to kind of live a dream and, and work with Wendy and Richard. They they were amazing and they let me in and, and help tell just a little part of the story. And you know, I, I still look back on, on those days in comics and I'm, I'm so grateful. And now I'm back to being a fan. When I read the final quest, I, I, I did it all in a week because I could only take so much emotion at once. Wendy's the building is shaking, Brandon. Yeah. I, I have strong feelings. I, I know. I have a lot of feelings, right? So, um... <laughs> I lost my place mentally. Hang on. Uh -huh. um, you read it in a week. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I had to take it in, in parts. Uh, I wrote to Wendy a message not unlike the email you, you just read. <laughs> you guys, you know, I've, I've cried before. I've never <laughs> cried reading a comic. <laughs> and and the amount of done. emotion and character and, and the feels, like you said, uh, that are in each page of ElfQuest. It's, it's amazing. So I have more to say, but that's it for now. Thank you for thank you. telling this lovely story, and thank you for letting me be a little part of it, and, and I'm honored to, to be up here to help you celebrate 40 amazing years. You will always be part of our tribe, Brandon. Now, usually somebody lets us know the time stamp, but... Um, ten minutes. Ten minutes, thank you. Um, do we, so we have ten minutes for questions, so does anyone have... Uh, well, somebody's going to tear their oh, arm out. There's a mic right over there. Oh, shoot. Oh, you mean I have to walk over there? Yeah. Is well, that... If we can hear you. If we can hear you. Yeah. The final quest, does that mean the final quest for Cutter? You haven't read it, have you? <laughs> I mean, you're saying Elfquest will continue. Does that mean there will be no more of Lita, Cutter, Ember? You think we're going to tell you? Oh, no! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Final quest, and you read right. it, and have lots of Kleenex. Here. <laughs> let's let's say that uh, <laughs> when I said that there are characters who survive the end of Final Quest, He's not and you name enough of those characters, <laughs> the chances are good <laughs> that some of them are going to have their own stories okay. to continue. Okay, Was that evasive enough? Yes, that's <laughs> perfect. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Uh, Hi. Um, I've been reading Elfquest. Can you, can you, yes. Sorry. Um, I've been reading Elfquest since I was really little. I read them from when they were like yearbook size. Um, I still have all of the ones that I got during that time. I was wondering if you guys were in the universe of Elfquest, what tribe would you be in? Uh -huh. Oh, no. You, are you asking all of us? Because sure. that's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, while sometimes I would love to be a wave dancer, because I inherited the wave dancers <laughs> and uh, actually started working with them in a part of ElfQuest called the Discovery. And they are our mer elves, they are our seaborn elves. And when I inherited them, they were at a certain level, but I, I wanted to take them through the roof and I wanted to give them. Uh, powers and color and, and fabulousness, which they now have. <laughs> and um, the, the beauty of swimming underwater weightless is something that really, really attracts me. But I think in the long run, I am absolutely a wolf rider. 
I can't be anything other than what I am. That's Skywise. He's a wolf rider, wolf blood or not, high one or not. That's all it is. What would you be? I mean, I think the answer to that is obvious. <laughs> right. yeah, definitely a wolf rider. Uh -huh. What would you be? I, I hate to be a copycat, but wolf rider, wolf for rider. sure. Right. You know, that's, the mountains, the trees. Yeah. That's yeah. the core group. That's the canonical group. So there you go. Who would you be? Wolf rider all the way. I love that. Some of your stuff. Oh, all right. We want lots of questions because there's Anything? a lot of you out there who must be just itching to ask more questions. You've got us for like six more minutes, and there are no questions. Is that one? Is... No. Oh, I was scratching. You were scratching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can make a statement. Okay. Here comes a right. question. Here we go. Alamo, you guys. Hmm? You already know who I am, but I'm going to ask a question anyway. Okay. Do it. <laughs> Are we going to see any more future quests as the stories go on? I got to tell this story. I got to tell this story because I'm so smugly proud of this. <laughs> we began telling future quests, one word, TM, stories in 1995 with the Rebels and Jink. If you've read Final Quest, you know that at least one of those names is very strongly hinted at. Um, a couple of years ago, DC Comics started putting out what they called Future Quest with Johnny Quest and, and all of the Hanna-Barbera um, adventure heroes in a kind of an anthology magazine, and I saw Future Quest, and I've got this radar that goes off, and I said, that's not right. So, I talked to our very, very good, very sharp entertainment lawyer, and I said, we were using that term 20 or more years ago. What can we do? And he got his team on it. And, well, the, Long story short, Future Quest is now a registered trademark. <laughs> DC Comics didn't think to register it. <laughs> Warner Brothers didn't think to register it. I registered it. <laughs> so when you ask, will you see more Future Quest? You're gonna see Future Quest <laughs> R in a circle, most definitely. So, thank you. Yes. I know we always ask this. Any news on TV or movies in Elfquest? I want to see something. Okay. <laughs> you always ask it, and we always answer it, and we almost always shuck and jive. <laughs> we have been courted by Hollywood almost since Elfquest began. We've been optioned, Elfquest has been optioned many times. The money's good. Hollywood doesn't know what to do with Elfquest. They want it to be Lord of the Rings light. They want it to be good guys versus bad guys. It's not. You know it's not. It's knowledge versus ignorance. It's much more subtle. It's, you know, she doesn't tell black and white, except in the printing, stories. Uh, they're very complex, and Hollywood just wants to dumb it down so far. But one thing is different now. The 40-year story has come to a conclusion, and we've got the whole ball of wax to show to somebody. And we're talking with some very, very interesting people about the possibility that might not have exist existed even five or 10 years ago. Instead of a movie, there are all of these wonderful, now complex, long-form series yeah! <laughs> what do you really think? My thoughts exactly. <laughs> um, you know, Game of Thrones is, is probably the gold standard for that, but there have been long series even before Game of Thrones. And wouldn't it just be something to see a 23 episode season one? just to establish the characters and the world and the situation and then the cliffhanger at the end for season two. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. yeah. We would love that.
Probably. <laughs> okay, Red. I just wanted to say thank you from my family to your family. I started reading ElfQuest when I was in college. My kids, when I had kids, they've read all my ElfQuest issues. So you span a generation, my family, and I just wanted to say, and I think everyone else here would just want to say thank you for just the years of entertainment. Someone was here. Someone was here. No? You're here. On an earlier panel, Wendy was on, um, another artist and writer was asked which one they identify as, and he said storyteller primarily. Yes. She was nodding her head emphatically. And, uh, but it made me think that there are, as an artist, you're able to draw certain panels that tell their own little stories that don't really advance the plot. And I was thinking in particular of the early scene with uh, one of the elves breastfeeding her cat. And this was like 25 years before all the controversy yes. where women were getting kicked out of restaurants for doing that. Yes. And 35 years before Facebook was having this controversy about the same thing. And it yes. kept bringing me back to that scene. And I was wondering, where did that scene come from so early? And well, did you guys discuss that? that? That's a scene with Rain Song breastfeeding her baby, and she had to feed her baby because it was hungry. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> uh, it's what the Wolf Riders do. I mean, you know. Now, here's the thing. I, I thank you so much for bringing that up, because it's been 40 years. And Elf Quest was born in a period of excitement and unrest and darkness and light. I'll go quick. Very similar to what we're going through now. And when Richard and I brought ElfQuest out, we had high hopes for the world. We, we, we thought that by 2018 there'd be flying cars and homophobia and racial prejudice and things like that would be so embarrassing because they would be so primitive and totally done with. That's what we thought. We all know where things are right now. And it strangely makes Elf ElfQuest more relevant now than it's ever been because inclusivity, women's, well, let's couch it in the term of women's rights, women's equality with the male characters. Um, diversity, uh, different ways to love, different ways to be family. It's all there, and it's all a message that needs to be out there more than ever right now. To wrap this up, we've got the high sign from the sign over there. So again, thank you all so very much for helping us celebrate 40 years of